When a San Bushman from the Kalahari Desert tells you that a plant has medicinal value, you best pay attention. He's almost certainly absolutely right. And in the case of this plant, he's 100% correct. Used by the San traditionally for thousands of years for a wide, wide range of different medicinal uses. It was in the early 1900s that the first German producer in Namibia exported a sample of this to, the, to Germany for scientific exploration and indeed found that this was a remarkable plant. How's it guys? I'm Gus the African Plant Hunter. This is the next in my ongoing series about underutilized plants in Zimbabwe that I believe have commercial potential for smallholder farmers. This is one of my very favorite. It's called Devil's Claw or Grapple. In the local Ndebele language around this area in Western Zimbabwe, it's called Inkunzani. Hapagophytum zaheri. Now, there are two Hapagophytum species very closely related that look very, very similar. Hapagophytum procumbens was the one that the Germans originally scientifically validated in the 1960s. It was added into the European pharmacopoeia in the 1980s and it's now globally known as a herbal medicine. This is not Hapagophytum procumbens, it's Zaheri, very, very, very closely related. Slightly different. The main difference is physical, obvious difference is in the, the size of the grapple. This is actually the seed pod, uh, which is called the Devil's Claw. Uh, and it has these arms on the Zaheri, they're quite short. On the procumbens, they're much longer. Otherwise, really hard to tell the difference. There is a chemical difference in the compounds, the medicinal compounds, but the active ingredient is found in similar quantities in both plants, so you can use both of them pretty much interchangeably. So what is it about this plant that is actually used commercially medicinally? Well, it's not the leaves, it's not the beautiful, beautiful tubular purple flower, it's not this very sharp and thorny looking grapple, it's way, way, way underground and it's a tuber. It often grows around a meter underground. It can be quite small or it can be quite large, maybe 30, 40 centimeters long. Depends how long it's been there. Now, the San were the first ones to figure out its medicinal use. They used it to treat a, a range of ailments, including arthritis. And it was for arthritis that it was first properly explored and found to be highly, highly effective in the treatment of arthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, bone pain, uh, aching, etc., etc. So it's used not just by humans, it's also used in veterinary medicine, particularly in the treatment of racehorses. Obviously, racehorses are involved in a lot of uh, athletic movement and their joints do tend to get sore, and devil's claw extracts have been uh, used for a very long time to treat them and to keep racehorses in peak physical condition. So if you want to stay in peak physical condition like a racehorse, uh, maybe that's what you need to be using. So how exactly do they use these tubers? Well, they dig the tubers up, they cut them when they're still fresh into slices, they dry the slices and then they mill them into a powder. That powder is either then used as the basis for an extract or is itself consumed in herbal medicine, obviously uh, often put into capsules or just compressed into tablets. One issue with harvesting a plant when you're taking the tuber that you do really have to be careful about is the over-harvesting. So if you're harvesting a fruit or a nut or a seed, uh, there's no real threat of over-harvesting, but when you're taking a tuber, that's the root of the plant and that can kill the plant. Of course, many phytochemicals are concentrated in the roots of plants, so it's often the roots that are used in herbal medicine and that's why over-harvesting can kill the plant. But the good news is, it's really not that hard to harvest the devil's claw sustainably. It's done a lot, particularly in Namibia, uh, which is the largest producer of devil's claw to the world herbal medicine market. And the way that they do it is by, they don't take 
all, so generally the devil's claw will have three or four different tubers. They don't harvest them all at once. They might take one, they might take two, they leave the rest. They don't touch the plant again for another three or four years. When they come back, they will have grown again and they can harvest again sustainably. The even better news is that actually it's possible to cultivate this plant. Not easily done, but it can be done. Farmers in South Africa are doing it, farmers in Namibia are doing it. And to my mind, there's absolutely no reason why farmers in Zimbabwe couldn't do it. At the moment, global market for uh, dried sliced devil's claws, about a thousand tons a year, but it's got great growth potential. It's mostly only sold at the moment in Western Europe. If you add it in Asia, North America, South America, and indeed Africa, it would be a huge global market. The herbal market overall for herbal medicines worth about 200 billion US dollars a year. So there's plenty of scope for this plant to grow. And I do firmly believe that this is a great opportunity for smallholder farmers, particularly those living in the dryland areas of Western Zimbabwe. All right, guys, that's my take on Hapagphytum zaheri. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have this, plenty more on my YouTube channel, Facebook and Instagram. Just type in African Plant Hunter. You'll find me there for sure. If you really like what I do, you can support me by going to patreon.com forward slash African Plant Hunter. And for the price of basically a cup of coffee or a pint of beer a month, you can support me and enable me to make more videos like this, which I hope will inform, entertain and educate you. As for me, you can tell from my eyes that the sun's getting low. It's time for me to retreat to my camp and go get myself a cold beer. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye.